Creating custom partition for the ESP32 is not an easy task. You have rules to memorize, and offsets calculation to make depending on the size of each partition. Today I'll show you an easy way to create ESP32 custom partition without worrying about partition sizes and offsets calculations. No more manual partitioning, it's just too complicated. Instead, I have created a web application that handles all the partition rules to make your life easier. You won't believe how easy it is to use. And the best part? You can download the custom partition you have created in this new web application and use it very, very easily in the Arduino IDE. My name is Charles, and after watching this video, you will be able to effortlessly create your own custom partitions and use them right away in the Arduino IDE. Let's get started! All right, let's head over to the web application. I have included the link in the video description, so feel free to follow along as I explain the features of the Partition Builder web application. Now, in this large black area, we are going to see our partitions in just a moment. By default, a 4 megabyte flash is selected, and this is the amount of flash memory available for the custom partitions. Now, you can adjust the flash memory size according to your own ESP32 development board. For instance, if you have a 16 megabyte board, the available memory for custom partitions will change accordingly. Now, I'll switch back to 4 megabyte since that's the size of my ESP32 development board. Now I have included built-in partition definitions mainly for demonstration. As you will see, creating a custom partition from scratch is incredibly easy with this web application. Now we're going to select OTA with SPIF partition to look at the basics of the web application. You see the six partitions listed with their type, subtype, size and offset. The offsets are calculated automatically by the web application so you don't need to worry about them anymore. Notice this icon on the left indicating that our partitions support wireless updates. Now the goal is to have no memory left unused by the custom partitions we build, achieving zero bytes left, meaning we're fully maximizing the available flash memory. At the top here, you can see a visual representation of the memory space occupied by each partition. Now to resize a partition, you use the slider inside the partition and you can see the partition shrinking in the visual representation as I move the slider to the left or to the right. As soon as I release the mouse button, the available memory is updated. You can then allocate this memory to another partition. So let's allocate some to the SPIF partition and you can see at the top in the visual representation the SPIF partition growing according to the size I gave it. Now memory space is displayed in bytes and kilobytes by default and if you prefer you can show them in bytes and megabytes. So here I have the megabytes value of the flash memory available and here in the size field, below the size in bytes, you have the value in megabytes. So I'm going to switch back to kilobytes. Now let's create a custom partition from scratch. You can use this red trash icon to delete all the current partition. Now to add a new partition, you click this add partition button, where you can choose from several partition types. The NVS non-volatile storage partition is used to store small amounts of data that must be preserved between ESP32 reboots, like configuration settings, for example, or sensor calibration data. Over-the-air updates partition are used to update your program on the ESP32 over Wi-Fi. The factory app is a partition to use when you don't need to update the code of the ESP32 over Wi-Fi. There are three file system partitions, FAT, SPIF, and LittleFS. These file systems reserve space on the flash memory for storing and managing data files. 
similar to folders on your computer. The OTA data partition will be discussed in a short moment when we look at over the air updates partition. The Cordon partition is a special memory area on the SP32 where the system saves diagnostic information when a crash or serious error occurs. The test app partition serves as the fallback boot partition if no other valid application partition is found. And personally, I never use it in my project, but if you have good use cases for it, please share them in the comments below. The fee initialization data partition stores settings for the ESP32 Wi-Fi and Bluetooth hardware to function correctly. But by default, this data is compiled into your application. So it's rarely needed and personally, I never use it. Now let's look at how to use the over the air updates partition. Now you see that three partitions are created and these three partitions are essential for updating the code on the ESP32 wirelessly. There is the OTA data partition. It is used on the ESP32 to manage the update process, ensuring safe and reliable program updates. Then you have two partitions for the program code, or if you prefer your sketch. You need these partitions to alternate between the current and updated versions during the OTA update process. So for example, if the code running on the ESP32 is from the app zero partition and you perform an over the air update, the ESP32 downloads a new program and stores it in the app one partition. The ESP32 then reboots and switches to run the code from the app one partition, making the app zero partition available for the next update. You'll notice that the slider to resize the app zero partition is disabled. You can only resize the app one partition and the app zero partition will automatically adjust to match the same size. This is necessary because both partitions must be the same size to ensure seamless wireless updates. If the partitions were different sizes, it could lead to potential issues such as insufficient memory for a new program, data corruption or failed updates which could compromise the stability of your microcontroller. Now let's pretend that I want all the flash memory for my Arduino sketch. I can create a factory app and resize it to use all the available flash memory. And this partition is fully valid. Now let's see how easy it is to use in the Arduino IDE. First, click the download CSV button and this will download the CSV file of the custom partition in your download folder. Now copy the partition.csv file to your Arduino project in the same folder where your sketch is located. Do not rename it because the Arduino IDE expects this specific file name to correctly recognize and apply the custom partition definition. Now let's open the Arduino IDE and will return afterward to the web application so I can show you more features. The code you see is part of a project I am working on. I have a large GIF file that is uploaded along my code that nearly fills the four megabyte of flash memory on my ESP32. Now, if I look at the default partition scheme, the largest for my four megabyte flash memory is the UJAP partition scheme. It has three megabyte for my sketch file, my sketch program, and one megabyte for spiff file. And if I use it to upload my code, it's going to fail because my program exceeds the available space on my board, which has a four megabyte flash memory, as you can see in this error message. This is why custom partitions come in handy. Since the release of version 3 of the Arduino core for ESP32 by Espressif, using custom partitions has become much easier in the Arduino IDE. First, make sure you have the latest version of the Arduino core for Espressif. Go to the Boards Manager and search for ESP32. On my computer, I have version 3.0.2 installed. And if you don't have it installed or have an older version, install the latest version 3 available. It will not work with version 2 
or earlier version. Now to use the custom partition we copied in the sketch folder, it's very easy. Go to the tools, partition scheme, and select the custom partition. Now all you need to do is upload your code and the Arduino IDE will use the custom partition we copied in the project to create the partitions on your ESP32 flash memory. That's all you have to do. It could not be easier. All right, the upload is a success. And here is the GIF playing beautifully on my screen connected to the ESP32 using the custom partition, which has a single factory app where we allocated all the flash memory. Now, there is still some features you need to know about. And if you are enjoying the video so far, please subscribe because you keep me motivated. And if you'd like to support my work, you can buy me a coffee. And thanks to those who have contributed, you guys are amazing. Now, let's add a factory app partition and a little FS file system partition. And let's allocate some memory to these partition using the slider. Now you can precisely allocate memory by using the minus or plus button. For example, I can resize the little fs partition by removing precisely some, some memory using the minus button or the plus button to add more memory. Now if I exceed memory, if I exceed the flash memory of my microcontroller. Here I have a 4 megabyte flash memory and I resize the little fs partition and I'm over 920 kilobytes. What I can do is use this left arrow to resize any partition to fit the available memory. So if I click, I resize the little fs partition to get zero bytes of memory. Same thing if, for example, I have some memory left here I have 704 kilobytes of memory left on my flash memory. I can reclaim that memory to any partition by clicking the right arrow. So reclaim the memory, for example, for the factory app partition, and I'm back to zero bytes. Um, let's say I resize this little FS partition. I have 992 kilobytes left. Let's resize it. And you're going to see that I'm over 32 kilobytes, and this is because of the offset calculation. So I need to resize the little fs partition to fit the flash memory and resize it to have zero bytes. Now let's create another custom partition with non-volatile storage. Let's say a wireless updatable sketch or program and a fat partition file system. Now, Espressif has recommendation in size for some types of partition like NVS. And if I try to sh shrink it, I'm getting a warning that the NVS partition size must be at least 12 kilobytes. So to correct that problem, I can use here the check button to resize to the recommended value. So if I click it, my NVS partition goes back to 12 kilobytes. It's the same thing for OTA data. If I try to give it more memory, I will get a warning that the OTA data partition must be exactly 8 kilobytes. So I can set it to the recommended value by clicking the check button. It's the same thing for the fat partition. If I try to lower it, I get a message saying that the fat partition minimal recommended size is 528 kilobytes. So I can click to resize it to the recommended value and I can give it more memory, more memory if I want. Now let's say I have some errors in my custom partition. Let's say my fat partition is not the right size. If I try to download it, I'm going to get a partition rules warning and I can cancel to correct the mistake or if I know what I am doing, I can proceed and download the partition configuration. But personally, I advise you to correct the mistakes. So let's do it. Now here you can see that I have, let's give some, some memory to my partitions. And you see here in the visual representation that I have all my partitions and I can over each one to see the number of bytes and kilobytes that they have. 
and this red partition here is the offset table so the ESP32 needs to have some space to store information about the custom partition so this is always reserved automatically by the web application now you will see that uh, the type subtype size and offsets are read-only fields you cannot change them because the web application uh, does it for you and makes all the calculations that are needed to uh, be compliant with the partition rules of Espressif. But you can change the name of your partition. So you, for example, you can here, let's say you want to change the, the name of this partition to folder, you can do it. But you cannot have two partitions having the same name. For example, if I try to rename this one to, let's say, folder, I will have a, a warning that this name already exists. Let's rename it to OTA data. Now this partition has over the air update capability. So if for example I remove the OTA data partition, I lose the over the air capability for this custom partition. So I can no longer use it to update my ESP32 wirelessly. So you see that I can remove any partition by clicking this red trash icon. So I can remove them like so. So this is version one of this new ESP32 partition builder web application. And if you run into any problems, you can click the get help button and you're going to reach my GitHub repository where you can open issues. So if you run into any issues using the, uh, the web application, you can create a new issue and I will look at any issue that you uh, submit to correct any problems that the web application could have. The ESP32 Partition Builder web application generates valid custom partitions that you can use directly in your projects with the Arduino IDE. It simplifies the complexities of partition rules, allowing you to focus on your main task and project goals. If you have any questions or feedback, please leave a comment below. I'd love to hear from you. Thanks for watching.